Hey, how's it going? This is Justin with Shock Therapy, and we're about to do a breakdown of our shop car that you saw go 112 miles an hour not too long ago. We wanted to be able to tell you a little bit about why we built it, what's in it, and some of the awesome companies that helped us put parts on this car that allowed it to do what it does. So one of the reasons that we built this car, obviously we're in the suspension business and we have a lot of shop cars so that we can use them for testing. So this Can-Am X3 RS is basically in stock form from a suspension standpoint with the exception of our parts. But we use this car on a daily basis, testing new parts, designing new components. Uh, we drive this car every single week, probably two or 300 miles a week. And our goal is to test and develop new parts and make them better, even from the first day that we even designed it. We try to improve on them as we go. We do that through physically using the car and physically abusing every single part we make. What's the difference between a pre-runner and a race car? Well, race cars have to adhere to all the rules in SCORE, Best in the Desert, or any other sanctioning body. And that means full roll cages, no opening doors, safety equipment, um, certain diameter tubes and wall thickness of tubes and tube placement, number of tubes in the chassis, and also adhering to all the factory suspension geometry points. A pre-runner doesn't have to adhere to all those rules. We want to build it safe, so it may have the same tubes, it might have the same inner wall thickness, but we also want to get in and out of it 10 times a day. So usually pre-runners are functional opening doors, uh, maybe even the stock dash is still in it, uh, maybe a stereo. You, know, you would never have that in a race car, of course, but basically it's a more usable, day-to-day -day version of your race car. So, one of the last products that we were testing on our pre-runner, or shop car, was a limit strap kit for the front and some new internal shock bodies and new internal shock bypass tubes, as well as a front anti-sway bar, rear anti-sway bar. So we were out testing the car in the desert, running it like we normally would run it, and between desert runs, there was a highway section that we had to use to get between spots. And on the highway, we just decided to floor the thing and it went 103. 103, we didn't think was very notable. Uh, it did it fairly easily. Uh, but after we told a couple people, like some of the race teams that we work with, they all said that they thought that might be the first X3 over 100 miles an hour and it was kind of a big deal. So we still didn't really believe it, but it gave us the idea, let's actually do it for real and set something up and see exactly how fast we could make the car go. So the only difference that we changed on our car from a normal testing pre-runner on a day-to-day -day basis and our speed run was adding 35 inch tires for extra gear ratio to try and run the thing a little bit taller out the back end and lo and behold 112 mile an hour. Some of the key components and sponsors that are on our car that give it the ability to do what it does. First off would be Tenzer tires. We run a 35 inch race tire on this car. Um, it's super sticky, excellent traction. We get no flats with this setup and it gives us the gear ratio to run the speeds that you guys have seen. So one of the things that we dealt with with this tire is it is so sticky and has so much traction that we actually did seven, eight different burnouts for that video before we could get one that would actually break loose and get what we wanted out of the system. The, the tire worked so well, we had too much traction. And it was a lot of effort to get what we got out of that video for sure. Another thing, when we finally got the tire to spin up, it is so sticky and tacky that it threw rubber all over the car and all over the people standing around it. We'll show you a little bit about that too. Uh, it's kind of amazing. <laughs>
another key component of our car is the Method 401R or a race wheel for Method. Um, our tensors are mounted on this wheel and the things that are important about it, number one, it's extremely strong. All the race teams are going this direction. It has no issues in race form. It's very, very light as far as wheel and tire combinations are concerned. With a 32 inch tire on this wheel, it's the lightest 32, and 32 inch tire and wheel combination made. 35 adds some weight, but we were willing to give that away for some gear ratio. That method wheel is the correct wheel offset, and that is key to our speed run because if you change wheel offsets in a negative way, you will gain scrub radius, and I won't go into the details of front end geometry, but it's bad if you have too much. And having it correct gave us stability, gave us the ability to run 112 miles an hour without having any movement in the wheel or any drifting or following of the lines in the road. So wheel offset, tire choice, paramount with what we were able to do. One of the most asked questions about our video is how we got so much horsepower to accomplish 112 miles an hour. Honestly, it was super easy. The only thing we did was have the guys over at Geyser Performance install an Evo 4RWI kit. That is one of the most reliable flashes that they offer. The motor is not torn apart to do it. Strictly injectors, a flash, intake tube, and that is it. So it's not very much horsepower that's added to this car. Probably in the 30 to 40 horsepower range on top of stock. But the guys over at Geyser did exactly what needed to be done. It runs flawless. We've had zero issues. RCV is an integral part of every build that we do because the second that you put a little bit of horsepower to it and a tire on the thing, you're going to chance having axle issues. Now, Can-Am does an ex excellent job. Their car is set up perfect. Stock tire, stock horsepower, no issues. As soon as you mess with those two things, you have to put axles in the car if you want reliability, and RCV always takes care of us. PCI, amazing company, radios, GPSs, all electronics, uh, helmets and other fire suits, things like that. They do an excellent job for us. If it wasn't for their GPS, we wouldn't know how fast we went in that video. Baja Designs, no doubt, best light built in the industry, and in this case, the fastest light on any X3. Safety is super important to us, so we rely solely on PRP and speed strap for all of our seat belt and tire strap needs and toe straps. If you guys like the way this car looks, then we should be thanking Wolf Designs. John and Amy Wolf do an amazing job, unbelievable to work with, excellent design work and installation. There's nobody else that you should go to. And if you want to detail your shop like we have, if you look behind me, that's all Wolf Designs. While we were running the speed video, there are actually three or four new products on the car that we're in the process of testing. First one is a new limit strap kit that you'll see clamped to the top of the shock. It's a billet upper mount with an adjustable clevis so that you can adjust the strap as it starts to stretch over time and use all of the suspension travel that you have available instead of running a strap that's too short and choking up the system. It eliminates all the front end clunk in the shock system and uh, keeps the life of the shock a lot longer. Another product that we're testing on this car as we speak is a front anti-sway bar system. You can take a look at it on the car. It's three-way adjustable, clamps into the existing factory bracketry with our billet brackets, uh, aftermarket uh, bushings, links, and bar, of course. You can tune the system to work with anything that you're doing as far as driving is concerned and terrain. So if you're rock or trail, you could run the bar on the soft setting, which is very similar to the stock bar. And if you're in the dunes or desert and you like to huck a corner a lot quicker than most guys, then you would appreciate the bar set in the middle setting. And if you're a dune guy strictly, where there's a lot of side bite, a lot of traction with a razor front tire, then you might appreciate the bar in the third adjustment, which is the stiffest setting. And all of these adjustments are geared towards stopping the front of the car from diving into a corner as you enter and picking up a rear tire. As the front bar starts to function the way it's supposed to, you can come into a corner hot, not have the dive, and complete a corner on the throttle, which is higher corner speeds, more stability, and less rollovers. The third thing that we have on this car that we're testing at the moment is a rear anti-sway bar. And just as I mentioned with the front sway bar, it is three position adjustable. You can tune it according to how you're driving. And in the softest position, it's a little bit softer or less stiff, more body roll than the stock bar is. In the middle position, it's a little bit stiffer or less body roll 
than the stock bar is, and in the hardest or stiffest position, it's quite a bit stiffer than the stock bar ever was and gives you the least amount of body roll for the quickest cornering that you could possibly throw at the car. Now, that would be dunes, where you have a lot of side bite and side traction where you would want the bar on the stiff side, or asphalt. In most driving positions or driving terrains, if you're a mountain or rock crawl guy or trail guy, something slow and more independent, then you're gonna want that rear bar on the soft position. Most people in desert, like we have around here, are probably gonna run it in the middle. Fourth thing that we have on this car currently that we are testing is our suspension modification kit, or an RIS. We call that a ride improvement system. That consists of three different stages. One, modifying the inside of the shock. Now, inside the shock, there's many things you can do. Valving is the simplest, easiest thing that can be done. For us, it's just one of 10 different items that we modify on the inside of the shock. For other people, it might be the only thing that they do. But it is the simplest, it's the easiest thing to do. Next, we'll modify pistons, we'll modify shafts, we'll change flow rates inside the shaft, we'll change oil viscosity, we'll change oil manufacture, full synthetic, partially synthetic, um, organic fluids. Uh, we modify the adjuster, change the rate at which it adjusts, which widens the range that you have to adjust. That way people can go all the way soft for trail and they can go all the way stiff for dunes and be able to cover the both ends of the spectrum, which is super important if you're gonna modify anything inside the shock. The second thing we can do inside is an internal bypass tube. Now all the RSs or X3 RSs come with an internal bypass shock and we make our own internal bypass tubes on our CNC's and we increase the bypass ports from a single or a two port system to as much as an eight port system and we modify that differently according to how someone's driving. So we might run a four or five or six port system for someone. We might run a six, seven or eight port, someone, port system for somebody. It depends on what they need and every single person is tuned differently and specifically for them by us. The third stage in our kit is a spring kit and we run dual rate on everything. So dual rate spring kit on this car can change from a 100, 105 pound combined spring rate, super soft, super plush. And as soon as you get into a bigger hit where the system compresses, it grabs the secondary rate nut, engaging the lower spring, which is stiffer, losing the upper spring rate, and jumping from, say, a 100 pound spring rate, somewhere in the 100 to 120 pound spring rate, to a 300 or a 350 or a 400, which makes it extremely stiff at the last little hit, last bit. So you can have a plush ride and still have no bottoming because you've got spring help in a progressive way. These three things combine to make the most plush ride possible while still having the most resistance possible in the, the G outs, in the bump stage, in the biggest hits and jump landings when you really need it to not bottom out the car. And the adjustments and changes we make on the inside give you the widest range of adjustability so that you can control your shock and your car and your terrain the way you drive. Last but not least, we should be thanking Can-Am for the car that we even started with. This is a 2017 X3 RS. It is in stock form with the exception of all the modifications that I had listed before. But Can-Am builds an amazing product and quite honestly, it's one of the best riding UTVs on the market today. And we are planning on having thousands of miles put on this car in the next couple of months. To date, we've got about 3,500. All of it is high abuse. When people watch our video going 112 miles an hour, the most asked question is, how is your car doing that compared to my X3 that can't? I'll narrow it down, three things. One, horsepower, Evo Flash. Two, clutching. We have an STM clutch on here that's tuned spot on. Three is gearing, and we got the gearing by running a 35-inch tall tire so that we could get 112 miles an hour at the RPM that we run.